the jailer. Okay, this game, Fury, lives up to its name. It managed to make me rage quit more than a couple of times, and I enjoy overcoming a good challenge. Even with all the saltiness, it's still a rather unique game that you may want to consider playing if you think you have the patience. You take control of this guy. You never really learn his name, but most characters in Fury call him Stranger. I guess they just lack the creativity to give him a better codename, despite making the most elaborate space prison just for him. That's right, the Stranger is locked up in orbit and being tortured until he's set free by a, um, furry. Seriously, the bunny get-up is a little weird, and this game is already at video game levels of crazy. He tells our silent protagonist how to escape. Killing the jailers at each level will open the door to the next floor and eventually to freedom. But don't worry, I know them. I can help. The game blends a few genres together, which helps Fury feel unique. It's part bullet hell, hack and slash, and walking simulator. Yep. Also, pro tip, if you press X, you don't even have to move the stranger. Anyway, you've got an energy gun for shooting and a lightning sword for slashing. Pretty standard stuff. Thankfully, the bullet hell portions aren't as brutal as other games, and it complements the quick nature of the hack and slash gameplay quite well. You also have a dash that you can go through attacks and parry which heals in addition to giving you an opening to attack. Sure, you can dodge these blows, but if you're low on health, it may be smarter to parry the hit. It definitely adds some depth, especially since you can't swing your blade like a weed whacker and expect to win. There are only boss fights in this game, so there is a bit of a Shadow of the Colossus vibe to the whole thing. Each boss acts as a level with different stages to clear. You get three lives, which sounds like bullshit at first, but clearing a stage in the fight maxes out your health, and will even return one life if you lost one or two beforehand. While this dynamic is helpful, it also means the boss will get full health for the stage if you die once, which can be a bit frustrating at times. I'm also not a fan of the easily telegraphed melee attacks. You see a small flash and hear a sound right before the bosses strike. It trivializes the melee combat by basically begging you to parry the move. But that's nothing compared to my hatred for this dash. You can hold the button to charge it, but that means it won't be instant if you don't release the button fast enough. And when you're dealing with this, every fraction of a second counts. I know this sounds petty, but this issue cost me many game overs, and is unacceptable for the fluidity of this type of game. I'm also a little annoyed by the difficulty settings. I'm fine that it's a hard game, but the difference between an easy and normal mode is insulting. Bosses have less stages in easy mode, and it's just a downright joke. Other bullet hells like Toho still give you a decent challenge on the easy setting. Medium difficulty, on the other hand, is pretty challenging, and hitting a game over on the last stage is super demoralizing. At one point, I wanted to just get past a boss, so I switched to easy, out of pure salt. Don't be me, kids, because you can't crank the difficulty back up for some reason. To Fury's credit, the story is put together quite well. It's pretty easy to empathize with torture victims yearning for freedom, but as you progress, you start to doubt the stranger because most of the jailers straight up call you evil. Even your furry friend acknowledges that the stranger is a dangerous man, so the player is slowly alienated from the character they're controlling in an engaging way. As I was playing, I was always wondering why these people went to such lengths to lock up the stranger. What did he do to warrant this kind of punishment? You go from sympathetic to knowing he's a bad guy, which sort of gives the player their own arc. So yeah, I'm a fan of how the story is told. As you walk up to the next boss, Fury does a good job at giving you tidbits of information that help paint a larger picture of the situation. The storytelling is vague and leaves a lot to the player's interpretations, but it still gives you enough info so you won't be left in the dark. Overall, the story is solid and interesting, but the ending felt lacking. Once the credits start to roll, you immediately understand why everyone was so scared. But after the screen fades to black, they throw in a plot twist and an extra boss that feels forced and ends the game on a bit of a sour note. The game looks nice, though. The futuristic setting with cell shading looks good and sort of made me want to rewatch Afro Samurai. The music also does a good job at matching the setting and tone of the game. Fury's a good game that's worth playing if you're up to the challenge. It's got two different endings, so there is some replayability to make up for the ten or so bosses, which isn't that much. Just have a stress ball or something to direct your frustration at, because broken controllers aren't fun. Fury gets a B. It's a fun game, but there are some flaws that bring the whole experience down. But if you're into the whole quick-paced action thing, there is fun to be had.
Okay, so uh, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to try to have a little bit more uh, engagement in some of my videos. So if you have anything you want me to review, it doesn't even have to be a game. As long as it has like a visual component to it, like anime, movie, television show, I can do a review of it. But if you have any thoughts or uh, suggestions, uh, leave a comment or tweet at me. I don't know. I'll put my Twitter in the description. Let's take this to the next level. See you guys next time. The things we do for love. Things I do for love.